Hey guys, welcome to the Simplify Your Life podcast. It's Coach Simona and I'm glad you decided to tune in. What's up guys? Today's episode is going to be all about letting go of control. And I want to have a heart to heart with you. I'm a control freak. Every time I have even the slightest hesitation about the outcome of something, I start to imagine the worst case scenarios. And just like any good control freak would do, I come up with the best excuses to keep everything under my control. Sure, it may be common sense that some circumstances you just can't control. How can you prevent an outcome if it depends on external circumstances or people? Although I still struggle with managing my control freak tendencies, I have found some things that help me let go of anxiety and enjoy all the good stuff that life has to offer. Here are four steps to let go of control or at least learn how to deal with it in a healthier way. Tip number one. Figure out what control means to you. All control freaks have one thing in common. We want to micromanage everything and feel safe when we think that we are on top of the situation. But we all differ as well. For some people, having control is important because it gives them a perceived sense of security. For others, control is a way to exercise power over other people. And then, there are those who want to control others because they fear that if they don't, they will get betrayed in one way or another. Whatever the reason for your controlling behavior is, you need to address it and confront the hard truth. Ask yourself the following introspective questions. What do I fear will happen if I lose control over this person or situation? What does control mean to me? Was there a situation in my past where I felt completely helpless and promised to myself that I would never feel like that again? What does control give me? And what does it take away from me? When you answer these questions, you will have a clearer picture of what your relationship with control actually is. Chances are you're going to find out that it's a toxic one. Tip number two. Write down the worst case scenarios. There is an awesome exercise that I learned from Dale Carnegie's book How to Stop Worrying and Start Living. Whenever you start worrying about something, which is essentially where control comes from, ask yourself one simple question. What is the worst thing that could happen? Now, start writing down all the things that could possibly go wrong if the situation that you're trying to control slips through your fingers. Try to make them at least five, because the first ones will probably not be the true deep answer that you're looking for. After you lay them down on paper, look at each and every one of them. Try to see from an observer's perspective how likely they are to happen. What you will see is not only that the possible consequences are not that life-threatening, but also that you don't have control over them anyway. So why waste so much energy thinking about them? Tip number three. Make a list of the things you can do. Taking action will make you feel powerful again. Instead of worrying about what's going to happen, come up with a list of things that you can influence through action. Trust me, you will feel better about the whole situation. And you will focus on solving the problems that will actually get you to where you want to go. For example, if you're trying to control the reaction that you're going to get from your boss or your partner after a tough conversation, focus on the things that you can control the things that you're going to say, how you're going to say them, and then become as detached to the final outcome as possible. Tip number four. Let go of the final outcome. Easier said than done, right? For a control freak, letting go of the final outcome can seem impossible. The good news is you can detach yourself from the situation. The bad news is you will have to raise your consciousness and become as mindful as possible. Here's how. By noticing the situation for what it is, without trying to change it. In the previous example, we were talking about trying to control an imagined 
or expected negative reaction of someone who matters to you. If you want to be mindful, what you need to do is watch out for three things. Your point of view, the other person's point of view, and the middle ground. If you zoom out and look at the bigger picture, you want something. The other side also wants something. So in the end, you're left with making the decision to either try to control the outcome or ground yourself in reality and make the best possible offer that would seem irresistible to the other side of the table. When you stop thinking about yourself, you will become more empathetic and more grounded in reality. By being mindful of the situation and tuning into your body instead of trying to control everything that happens, you will find that the outcome will not only be better than you expected, but you will actually gain more control by surrendering control in the first place. At the end of the day, control is a shining armor that we put on ourselves because it protects us from getting hurt. But that armor can become extremely heavy, especially if you make yourself wear it 24-7. If we want to live life to the fullest and experience true joy, we need to learn to let go and simply let life happen. You're not a victim of your circumstances if you lose control, but there is a good chance that you will become a victim of your own negative thought patterns if you don't. And let me remind you of my favorite saying, life is not meant to be understood, it's meant to be lived. So go out there and make the most of it. All right, guys, that's all for today. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you liked it, you know what to do. And please subscribe to my channel if you don't want to miss out on my weekly episodes. Oh, and one more thing. Let me know in the comments below how do you let go of control. I love you guys. And I will talk to you in the next one. Bye.